to let the witnesses and myself catch the breath. <laughs> Everybody, great. So I love seeing this sort of uh, kidding and relationship that you're just displaying here, because I remember coming in uh, at the same time as Representative Vice as a freshman, and when you were chair, constantly telling us about it's got to be four corners. Like, how many times do we hear, it's got to be four corners? And so I looked back up, and it looks to me like the last time um, we passed an appropriations bill, uh, it was 361 in the House to 69. That number tells us that it was an incredibly bipartisan four-corner bill. Uh, in the Senate, it was 68 to 31. Um, and, and that's, as you pointed out, what appropriators do, but they negotiate all four corners. And it is the one time when our Congress, on both sides, talk to each other and negotiate. Uh, so, you know, Representative Bice, did you vote for the Fiscal Responsibility Act? Yes. And. Uh, Representative Joyce, did you also vote for the Responsibility Act? <laughs> You're being told you you did. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember which is FRA. The one this year? FRA. Yes, the one this year. The yeah, the budget yes. deal. Yeah. So so I think that that was also one of those moments where uh, we had Americans really scared. Uh, markets scared, the world scared, that we were not going to be able to actually get the job done and we were going to default. And instead, there was a bill passed with 149 Republicans and 165 Democrats that was not the favorite of maybe anybody, but it's, that's the nature of legislation, is it's the art of compromise. And we just heard uh, uh, you know, the ranking member say, I, I didn't like it, but I am going to work towards that. Um, and I think that that's what's so worrisome for my community and for people who talk to me. I pointed out that the car dealers were in my office last week saying, you don't understand that when we don't have appropriations, it hurts my dealership because federal employees or people related uh, who have contracts, and New Mexico has a lot of service members and federal employees and people with contracts, they don't get the work on their cars done, right? And so it's a ripple effect. Um, so I think that this is why it is so scary that we're not doing this, that we're at this moment again, and we have this short-term funding bill uh, that really gives the extreme MAGA Republicans four more weeks, and we don't know what the next demands are going to be, uh, because I read it like you encouraged us to, and it is not just a percent cut. It's 8.1285 percent. It's very precise about how much is being cut, and that's what it says. Everything is cut except for these very small areas. Um, Ranking Member DeLauro, we've, we've talked a lot about energy tonight, um, and when we start looking, there's both the 8.1285 percent cuts, but there's also the Agricultural Appropriations Bill even looks at more cuts. Electric co-ops serve people in my community and people in almost every one of the members' communities here. Can you tell us what's going to happen to electric co-ops uh, if we continue down this path? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, th th that, th th that's the point. First of all, with regard to the agriculture side of this with the, with the cuts, we're looking at guaranteed loans to farmers, which are going to be cut uh, very, you know, very seriously, it's $536 million less for direct and guaranteed farm ownership loans. Um, and uh, what, uh, let me see if I can put it this way. There's been a lot of talk about how the 8% cuts are only for 31 days. But the cuts in the House Republican funding bills for the full year are even steeper. That is where you will see that the cuts to rural electric co-ops, which will decimate 
the, the energy sector there and the cost of energy, which uh, uh, you know, people are so concerned about. And that is in the bill. So that is a much steeper cut. You didn't ask me about education, but if you go to those regular funding bills, which is where they want to go with 31 days is to work out these bills, we're talking about the Title I program in, the, uh, in, in education as an 80% cut in Title I, just about eliminating public education. In this 80% cut in Title I, and I think we need to remind Americans what mm -hmm. Title I means, and that means those schools who have higher poverty levels, and they're the schools that need it most. Mm -hmm. And that's why the federal government comes in and provides some assistance. But, and so we're going to cut it 80%. Yeah, 80%. They want to cut it 80%, which is the cornerstone of our federal investment in public education. So your point is that if... It, it's 8%, it's 8.1%, some instances like LIHEAP, 65%, or uh, you look at Army Corps, which is, I think, 18%. Um, uh, uh, you look at the wildfire suppression of funding, it's a cut of about 44%. So there are significant cuts. But if you get to the bills that they talk about wanting to get to, the regular bills, the cuts are staggering in terms of where they want to try to go in, the, in these efforts. And so you, 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 you can't, it's not 8%. It's a heck of a lot more. And in the agriculture bill, they would take the agriculture bill back to 2007 in terms of the, uh, the, the, the numbers. The, for the labor age bill, it's to 2008. And it is the same for several of the other appropriations bills. So, uh, and I'll make the point again, it's 31 days, but we cannot craft a, 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 a final bill in 31 days. You need at least six weeks in order to do this. So that means if you have another continuing resolution, you're gonna look at the same cuts, which are gonna be extended into not 30 days, but 60 days and more, which is really uh, unbelievably harmful uh, 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 to, uh, to, to folks. And, and I think that that's the concern that my constituents have, and even when I go to places that aren't New Mexico, is that the Fiscal Responsibility Act set out the framework. And the Senate, both Republicans and Democrats, am I correct, that they've been following what we agreed to. That's right. Right? And the, and the yeah. Senate has mm -hmm. passed out appropriation bills consistent with what we agreed to, with what 149 and 165 right. Democrats agreed to. Yeah. The Senate, both Democrats and Republicans, are adhering to the budget agreement, and, and which is what we should do. But I'm going to just, because I just, I, I asked for this information. Agriculture cuts in the full year bill, one billion cut to rural electric co-ops a $500 million cut from the Rural Energy for America program. Uh, for, for your purposes, it's $15 million uh, uh, cut from New Mexico alone. $4 billion uh, cut from the at-risk agricultural operations. That is in the full year bill, which is where they want to go in the next tranche here. So 31 days is not the end of this process. 31 days opens the door to these the massive, massive cuts in the appropriations bill. And I have a very large rural district, but so do many of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle. And what you're pointing out is the number of farm loan borrowers, uh, about 104,000, that's farmers. Those are small farmers right. that really need this help. And that's, that, that's in the CR. Yeah, that is in the CR. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that that's I think that that's something we need to think about is what are we doing to our economy? What are we doing to our rural economy mm -hmm. with these mm -hmm. kinds of cuts? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I could go on. We were talking about you know police and law enforcement. You know, earlier when we were talking about other things, and we need to remember my local police departments. I just met with my sheriffs, uh, all the sheriffs in New Mexico, and mm -hmm. and the local police. Burn, JAG, and COPS programs, those are going to be cut. 
like sort of these small local police forces rely mm -hmm. on this extra mm -hmm. money they get from the federal government, and those are going to be cut. A ranking member. Yes. Member. Yeah. No. No. These are programs. You, you, you know. You know. We we're looking at um, uh, uh, making communities less safe. Fewer law enforcement officers on the on the beat apprehending fugitives. Uh, or, or fighting, they were, were all worried about fentanyl and opioid trafficking, you know? So it is, it is a serious cutback in, in, uh, in, in law enforcement uh, across the board. Right. Across the board. So, I, you know, when we were talking about the, uh, as the, we began the, the, you know, the High Wire Act uh, that we did, when there was a threat to default on America, you know, I asked the Republican budget chairman about the drastic cuts to rural communities. I asked him, how do I go back and I explain this to my rural communities? And he told me, open quote, you should tell them that we have to prioritize. And what this tells me is we are not prioritizing the people who need it most. We're not prioritizing rural America when, when we do these kinds of cuts. Well, across the member, board cuts don't prioritize. It's just a. It's across the board. Just, so we don't look at it. What, ranking member, I mean, can you explain to us when we do these kinds of cuts and look at cuts only, who are the Republicans protecting? Like, what for? Why can't we do something else? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I said a few moments ago that I think that the uh, view that, that uh, the spending or public investment, in people, people's lives, their economic future, uh, I think is a proper role for the government. And, but there doesn't seem to be the same view as to the revenue and of how we are getting revenue from the wealthiest corporations, many of whom don't pay any taxes. Uh, it's not even a question, as I said, of paying a fair share. They just don't pay taxes uh, at all. And so there is a shortage of, 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 of revenue. And so then you got tax cheats, you got corporations, et cetera, who wind up getting the special breaks and the tax credits, et cetera. Uh, and that's something that should be looked at in a very substantial way. And you will look at the, the notion, not, not here, of cutting back on, uh, on um, uh, 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 the IRS and hiring of people uh, that will go after, if you will, the tax cheats. But that's not a road some of my Republican colleagues want to go down. So instead, we're cutting essential programs from law enforcement to our farmers mm -hmm. instead of making sure that everybody pays their fair share in taxes, yes. protecting the wealthiest And as I say, it's not even fair share. We have corporations over 30 in this, in this, in, in this nation who pay no taxes at all. Yeah. That. Another 70 or 80 who don't pay what they're supposed to be paying in taxes. But we failed to go after them and make the case that that would add to the revenue that we need and we have in order to deal with making public investments. So we could have public investments as long as if we did that. Well, I also would, heard a would, lot of... Would the general lady yield? I also, would this not apply also to the president's family to pay their fair share? But I, I think yield that back. that's the... It's that, any that, president's that's, that's family. The, that makes no it's, sense whatsoever. It's, it's in any terms president's of family. About. Yeah, everybody's, everybody's family <laughs> should pay their fair share. Yeah, right. Um, so I saw... We talked a lot about border security. We also had... Uh, uh, ranking member Delaro talked about how we're actually cutting border security. I wanted, uh, Mr. Chairman, I seek unanimous consent to enter into the record two articles by the Cato Institute, which I understand is often described as a more conservative institute. The first one is titled, President Trump Reduced Legal Immigration. He did not reduce illegal immigration. The, no, second, yes. the second article is that fentanyl is, sm is smuggled into the United States for U.S. citizens, by U.S. citizens, and not by asylum seekers. Without and objection. I th thank you very much. And I think what a lot of what we need to start looking at is increasing what we need to, to go after fentanyl, 
because it is destroying our communities. Mm -hmm. And so we need to invest in those things, including making sure we don't cut law enforcement like this bill does and like their agriculture appropriations bill does. Uh, and with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman from South Carolina is recognized for any questions he cares to pose. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, Congresswoman Bice and uh, Congressman Joyce, thank you all for, for being here. Y'all negotiated great. You um, 